Okay guys, welcome back to another 10 minute Unity tutorial with Dr. H on behalf of Octobeard Media. In this tutorial series, I'm gonna teach you how to implement this game system into your game with the minimum of coding knowledge. So let's take a look around and see what we've got. We've got a phone over there. We've got these spheres that are bouncing up and down. I'm gonna collect them. Ooh. There's the phone. Better go and answer it. I know I shouldn't have clicked on it. I know I shouldn't have clicked on it, but the link said like and share, and I did. And now I regret it. Now I think he's after me. So I'm going to leave this trail of breadcrumbs. I'm going to leave these messages. Check in from time to time. If I go missing, please come and find me. Okay, so you'll notice it's automatically spawned in another five objects for me to collect. And if I very quickly go around and collect them, let's see what happens. Phone rings again. I go in. And if I answer it, you'll see another message flashes up. This one's blank. And it would try to play another audio file. And again, it's spawned in five more objects for me to collect. So, let's see how this was done. First thing I'm going to do is create a new scene with Command M, and I'm going to show you how I created the bouncing balls. So just so I have a frame of reference, I'm going to drop a quick game object, 3D object, plane into view. I'm going to frame in on it, and I'm going to make it 3 meters by 3 meters by 3 meters. And just to give it some texture, I'm going to drag my street onto there like so from the previous set of Unity tutorials. Do please check the description if you haven't seen those. Now I'm going to create a game object, 3D object, cube. And I'm going to frame in on that cube like so. I'm going to leave it where it is at the moment at 0, 0, 0. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that cube with command D. So now I've got two in my scene. And this second cube, I'm just going to rotate it 45 by 45 by 45. What you can see now is I've got two cubes, one on top of the other, like so. I'm just going to make the second cube a child of the first. And then with the first clicked, I'm going to create another game object, 3D object. This time, it's going to be the sphere. This sphere needs to go around the outside, so I'm going to expand it with the scale tool, which is R on the keyboard, till it's about that big. In fact, I'm going to do it mathematically. I'm going to make it 2.5 by 2.5 by 2.5. And then I'm going to make these two cubes the children of the sphere. If I just quickly turn the mesh renderer off on the sphere, you can see underneath there are the two cubes. I'll turn that back on. The mesh renderer makes something visible or invisible. In order to make this see-through, like a kind of a force field almost, I'm going to create a material. And the particular material I'm going to call simply green. And then I'm going to go over to the shader here, and I'm going to change the rendering mode from opaque to transparent. That's part one. Part two, obviously, I'm going to make it green over here. I'm going to make it this shade of green. Part three. Most important, whilst you're still on the color selection here, we've got the red, the green, and the blue channels. We also have the alpha channel. The alpha channel lets you make something see-through or not see-through. In order to get the full effect, let's drag this material onto the sphere. So the sphere is nice and thick and opaque. And now, if I reduce the alpha channel, you can see it becomes transparent. I'm gonna take the transparency down to about there. And sure enough, if I move my sphere up in my scene, all of the children move with it. Now, I'm going to control the bounce with a script. And the script is written here is Crumb Script. If you're one of my students, you can download Crumb Script from the SharePoint along with all of the other assets. You should download Crumb Script and the GM Script and the Phone Controller Script as well. You'll need to install all of these scripts in order to get this to work. Now, the aim of this 10-minute tutorial is that you can get up and running with a minimum amount of scripting knowledge. So I'm not going to go into coding in any kind of detail. I have other tutorials online for that. But there are a couple of things that it's very important to note. First of all, in order for the Crumb script to work, the GM script must also be in play because there are some things in the Crumb script that relate to the GM script. The GM is the Games Master script. So I'm just going to drag a quick first person player into this scene and I'm going to attach the GM script to something that will never ever be destroyed as long as the player is playing. I'm going to attach the GM script 
to the player. We'll get back to the GM script in a later tutorial, but as long as it's in the game for now, we should be okay. Now I'm going to go onto the sphere and I'm going to drag the crumb script onto that. And when I do, it's going to create a few options. So the first thing you'll notice is it's created this rotation speed down here. I'm going to set that to 50. If I push play, you can see that it's missing. It's not there. The reason for that is because I haven't zeroed my scene and everything in it. So I'm going to quickly do that. I'm going to go to my plane and I'm going to put my plane at 0, 0, 0. I'm then going to put my FPS controller at 0, 0, 0 as well. And I'm going to move the sphere to 0, 0, 0 as well. Now if I push play, I'm just going to lift my, I'm going to lift my FPS controller up and back a little bit so they don't collect it straight away. Now if I push play, you'll see there is my cube rotating inside the sphere. Okay, but the ball isn't bouncing up and down yet and I really want it to. So in order to do that, I'm gonna go back onto the script here and I'm gonna see this thing called Curve It. If I click on Curve It, it opens up this curve option here. And as you can see, I've got various different options of how I want my object to move. I could have it moving up in a really linear fashion. So it would move like an elevator moving up like that. Or I can have it moving like that, so it starts off slow and gets faster. But I think what I really want is this one here. So it's going to move like a curve. If I now push play, you'll see it moves up, but then it skips straight back down again. The reason for that is because I haven't looped it, or more specifically, I haven't used the ping pong function. If I go back into my curve here, just click on it again, get my curve up. I look at the options of what happens when we get to the end of the curve. I can loop, I can clamp, or I can ping pong. Ping pong means it goes all the way up and it comes all the way back down again. So if I push play now, what I should see is the object moving up and bouncing down, moving up and bouncing down, and so on and so forth. Now I can feel free to move my sphere where I want it in my scene, for example over there, and it will bounce up and down wherever I've put it in my scene. A couple of other things to be aware of. One of the sections of the crumb script makes reference to on, trigger, enter. The idea being that if the player enters the trigger, something's going to happen. In order for that to work, I need to go onto my sphere here, and where it says sphere collider, I need to turn that collider into a trigger. This means that when the player enters that area, it will trigger them picking up the sphere. The final thing I need to do is I need to attach my audio clip. You'll notice here there's a section for audio clip in the crumb script. And there's also a section for audio clip in the audio source. So what I'm going to do, I've chosen my ding sound here. And if I just play it for you, you can hear it. I'm going to attach that to the script. I'm going to drag it into the audio clip here and I'm going to drag it into the audio source. It should really be on both. Now, I'm just going to play test this and we'll see what happens. So I'm getting the sound effect straight away, even though I haven't collected the object. The reason for that is because I have this box here checked play on awake. I don't want it to play when the game wakes up. I only want it to play when the character collects it. So if I push play now, it doesn't play the sound effect, but if I go over and collect it, hopefully it will. As we can see, it hasn't collected it because I haven't done one very important thing. If I take another quick look at the crumb script, I'll notice here it says that if the game object is tagged player. And if I check my player up here, my player is untagged. So I just need to go to the FPS controller, tag, and make sure that they're tagged player. Now if I push play, I should be able to go over and collect the sphere. Perfect. This has been a 10 minute tutorial from Dr. H on behalf of Octobeard Media. In the next tutorials, we'll take a look at how we trigger the phone ringing, how we get the messages to play video and audio, and how we spawn in more collectibles for the player to collect. Thanks very much for watching.